So, at least from my perspective, it seems like most of the things that human beings care about are uh, non-physical. You know, like truth, beauty, goodness, love, justice, um, harmony. You know, these aren't things that you can point to in the world. They're immaterial values. And, you know, for human beings, most of the world that we live in uh, is made out of these immaterial values, these ideas. Um, and so often, you know, whatever we might mean by the material world uh, is seen through the lens of, of ideas. And so, you know, being in such a position, the position that the human being is in, uh, living in a world of ideas, it would make sense that we would do metaphysics, wouldn't it? Um, and even if we're skeptical about our ability to know what might be out there, what might be the objective state of affairs in some uh, external world, which pre-exists our consciousness, even granted that we're skeptical that any of that is knowable, we still have to do metaphysics to try to understand the conditions that make possible uh, our ability to think at all. How is it that I can know that I can't know? Uh, and, you know, really, I think if we reflect enough, we come to see that the, the supposition that there is a world out there beyond perception, such that we could talk of mere perceptions as not being true knowledge, which I think sometimes that's, that's what you infer, uh, Piro. Um, you know, to even make that assumption that perceptions are missing what's really behind uh, our experience, you've already laid out a metaphysical scheme. You know, it's just not been made explicit. Uh, you know, in, in point of fact, at least as, as far as I can tell, you can't open your mouth to speak uh, without making metaphysical assumptions. Any claim you make about the world presupposes uh, an already established framework, an imaginary background that underlies the explicit state of affairs that your words point to. So, you know, by virtue of the fact that we are linguistic animals, we are, uh, at least once we come to reflect upon our own speech, metaphysicians. And to deny that, I think, is, uh, it's, it's, it's an oversimplification, perhaps, or a cop-out, or because it just seems like it lops off half of human life. And granted, it's difficult to have to uh, come to terms with the possibility of knowledge. If you can really know what's going on, if you can come to an understanding of the absolute, and yet you somehow don't know it yet, well, that makes you feel pretty... Uh, you know, pretty bad, or at least, you know, it would, it would make you think, that, oh my shit, I've got to get my act together, I've got to figure this out, because that's possible for me as a human being. And I think, you know, all spiritual traditions grant this in their own way. Uh, you know, Buddhism, you know, the Buddha referred to the human being as a very auspicious occasion uh, that we should have reincarnated as a human rather than any of the other sorts of sentient beings in all the other realms. Um, you know, plant and animal and, uh, you know, the, the, the higher realms, which, you know, higher doesn't necessarily mean that they're better. You know, there's hungry ghosts and uh, other uh, beings which aren't in the position that the human being is because the human is, is capable of, of awakening. Uh, and so it almost makes us responsible for uh, that sort of ultimate realization. And even in the Christian tradition, you know, this notion of sin, a lot of people who were raised Christian like to throw off that baggage and stop feeling guilty about being a sinner. That sin just means you're not living up to your full uh, potential. Uh, that there is um, a spiritual reality that you can come to know that you are at least so far unable to realize. That is to live in sin and um, you know, I think the human being, or at least we could say the, uh, in the Western tradition, uh, the human has been obsessed with these metaphysical questions of meaning and purpose and origin and destination, 
destiny uh, because we can't help but ask such questions because we live in worlds which uh, for the most part are physical yeah and, and there are certain physical bodily restraints that we must deal with but these restraints have meaning for us and we have dreams which seem entirely detached from these physical restraints and ideals which seem to uh, be what underlies the very possibility of there being physical constraints at all. Um, and so I, I guess I just don't see how we can uh, toss metaphysics overboard if we expect to you know, continue deepening our understanding of the human condition. They seem too crucial. Uh, you know, and, and certainly dogma is something to be looked out for. We need to you know, constantly be aware of the potential for dogma, of the potential for humans to become fixated on uh, a particular set of beliefs. Uh, but you know, in order to say that someone's belief is wrong, again, you're doing metaphysics. And so uh, we've got to find some sort of uh, a balance here. Not all metaphysics, not all metaphysical reflection uh, is dogmatic. It seems I can't help but ask questions that there aren't, you know, empirical experiments which I could devise to answer. Most of the important questions I ask, there, there's no way to test empirically what the answer to them might be. And so I must do metaphysics. Uh, so, you know, maybe, I don't know, they're not, I'm, I'm disagreeing with you, obviously, here, Piro. Uh, I'm not saying you're wrong, because I feel like I, I kind of get your point about, you know, dogma and ideas that can't be proven right or wrong, and, you know, you think all metaphysics is just that, but, you know, while I'll grant that most metaphysical questions, you know, we're never going to come to some way of proving objectively what the fact of the matter is, we've got to enter discourse about these things, and through, uh, you know, many exchanges, eventually we come to, to see inwardly and to share an inward sight of, of what these ideas we're talking about are, um, and then, you know, with continued dialogue, we can hope at least, and I think there's evidence in history for this, that eventually human beings come to what could be called an objective um, inward awareness of of truth, and they share this inward awareness of the truth, though it can't be pointed to anywhere in the physical world. You know, like the Declaration of Human Rights, for example. Uh, you know, there's nothing scientific about that. There's nothing uh, physically measurable about the truth of that. It's an agreement that human beings come to that it's an objectively true fact. You know, not objective in that it exists outside of human beings. No, no. Within the human sphere of, of social relations, it's objectively true that human beings uh, deserve equal rights under the law. Uh, and the only way to justify that is by doing metaphysics. And, you know, otherwise, what are we supposed to do? Just not talk about why we feel like human beings all deserve equal rights? I mean, we've got to articulate the reasons underlying these values that we have. And you know, that's where metaphysics come from, as far as I can tell. But, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. And, uh, Piero, let me know what you think. I hope uh, you know, you're, you're understanding where I'm coming from and why I kind of feel like it's silly to say that we can get rid of metaphysics. It seems intrinsic to the human condition as far as I'm concerned. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know what you think, Piero, or anybody else that wants to chime in. Thanks for listening.